Major developments tonight in the coronavirus pandemic capped by a presidential address to the nation. Here are the numbers nationally. According to John Hopkins University, more than 1300 cases are in the U.S. 38 people have died. California has now seen 177 confirmed cases and four deaths. KCAL 9's <clears throat> Randy Page is joining us now with more on the White House response. So many stunning developments yeah. today. Tonight, President Trump announced travel restrictions for incoming flights from Europe and other measures in a sober address from the Oval Office. My fellow Americans. In his 10 minute address to the nation from the Oval Office, President Donald Trump made this stunning announcement. To keep new cases from entering our shores, we will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. The new rules will go into effect Friday at midnight. These restrictions will be adjusted subject to conditions on the ground. Later, the White House clarified these flight restrictions only restrict foreign nationals who've been in Europe over the past 14 days. Cargo is not impacted, and the restrictions do not apply to the United Kingdom. The president also advised nursing homes to suspend all unnecessary visits, called on older Americans to avoid non-essential travel in crowded areas, directed the Small Business Administration to provide low-interest loans to businesses affected by the virus, and called on the IRS to defer tax payments without interest for people and businesses impacted by the pandemic. This, as the nation's top doctor on infectious diseases, offered his most ominous assessment yet. If we are complacent and don't do really aggressive containment and mitigation, the number could go way up and be involved in many, many millions. That warning is being heard across the nation. In Washington, Governor Jay Inslee has instituted a ban on gatherings involving more than 250 people in three of the state's most populous counties. All Seattle schools are closed, and that's just for starters. And the decisions we probably will be making in the upcoming days are going to be profoundly disturbing to a lot of the ways we live our lives today. Washington isn't the only place limiting gatherings. All assemblies of more than 1,000 people have been banned in San Francisco for the next two weeks. Washington, D.C. is recommending any non-official gatherings of more than 1,000 people should be postponed or canceled. And the nation's biggest St. Patrick's Day parade, which draws an estimated 2 million people, was canceled. There is no magic silver bullet at the moment medically, but there is a very successful uh, effort that we can take to slow the spread of this disease. The Dow has now fallen into a bear market. All this continues to have an impact on the stock market, which crashed again today over fears of the virus, closing down nearly 1,500 points. Hope fizzled that President Trump and Congress can come up with a fiscal stimulus that could try to cushion the U.S. economy from the impact of the coronavirus. Tonight, President Trump downplayed the severity of the stock market losses. This is not a financial crisis. This is just a temporary moment of time that we will overcome together as a nation and as a world. And the president concluded with this. Acting with compassion and love, we will heal the sick, care for those in need, help our fellow citizens, and emerge from this challenge stronger and more unified than ever before. God bless you and God bless America. In his address to the nation tonight, the president said health insurance companies agreed to waive all co-payments for coronavirus treatments and to extend insurance coverage to cover those treatments. Well, there are reports tonight that a spokesperson for a major health insurance lobby said that applies only to testing for the coronavirus, mm. not for treatment. I see. All right, Randy, thank you.